I pride myself in making a good physical painting. You grandchildren will have it. I know how I constructed them from st stretching the canvas, priming, and the way I mix my own paint. It will, they will last. So I think that I've taught you the importance of the craft. I think that you've become a good photographer and filmmaker. I wish I had taught you other things too, like bookkeeping and uh, such uh, <laughs> ancillary skills one needs as a, as a person functioning in these days. But I think that you've learned from me there's no such thing as a half-baked job. It's got to be done the right way. For those of us that don't know your painting, can you sort of give me a brief spiel of um, some of the reoccurring uh, themes and subject matter in your work? In all my paintings, even the earlier ones, Holocaust is a subject matter. Even when it is not in there, I'm going away from it. Very early on, I used biblical subject matter as a symbol. I have small sketchbooks, just using this, sort of doodling in there. And I was leafing through one of them and saw one and wondered what was that. It looked like a person holding what looked like a knife over another person. I'm trying to think, what is the larger pattern? What am I repeating there? What is the big image? And the story of Abraham and Isaac came up. And so you're interested in... And I was interested in that question. How come that an omnivalent, benevolent, omnipowered deity would order this? Or why did we invent that image at all? It became a question of how come evil? I was trying at one time, not too long ago, to paint evil. Right, I remember. And I failed miserably. If you paint evil, it has to have a human element in it. A barbed wire, a gun, something, or, you know, some, something, a violent symbol. As it was, or as it is, these paintings are just dark, gloomy paintings, emotionally loaded. So you're sort of a reoccurring character, or you're not really a character, you are who you are. A subject it, matter. A subject in my yeah. work, whether it is you as a Holocaust survivor or your bo something more specific, your body. And I think over the years, I mean, I've been taking photographs of you since I was, since almost since I picked up photography, using you as a prop, as a character, almost using, and you've always been open to everything. You know, no matter what, if I tell you I need to photograph you in your underwear, you know, off go the clothes. Nobody has ever accused me of exploitation, but I sometimes do want to do things with you that I worry might even trigger some sort of traumatic memory. I'm used to that. They're not from you, but you know, they have to do things that. Uh, I'm physically not quite able to. Now, uh, mentally, any demands, I'll answer it. To my best knowledge, again, you know, uh, considering my age, uh, that goes specifically for experience during the war. From the very first day when you were old enough to talk, you were aware of, if not told, Ask me a question, any question. I'll gladly answer it. You and I went to Dachau in May of 2015 for the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the concentration camp where you were a yeah. prisoner. We were talking about if your survival was due to a physical, like your DNA, your genetics, your mental strength. My physical survival is Pure luck, no brains at all. When every tenth was shot, I was number nine. However, to me, the more important part is a mental one. 
The one thing that helped me survive, and perhaps others, was the awareness that we were philosophically on a different level, that we knew what was right and what was wrong. So our weapon was civilized behavior. I think a lot of people nowadays look at the Holocaust and compare Trump's rise as our president to, they, they see a sort of similarity to Hitler's rise. But I don't think we believe that anything is going to happen in the same way that it happened to you. Do you think, I mean, how do you think we're going to fare? My grandmother used to say, your words into God's ear. I hope that what you say is right. But I'm reminded of what happened in the 1930s when everybody said, that madman is not going to last. Soon or later, he'd been going to be cut down by his compatriots. The march to Washington, the protests around me, give me some assurance that this is a different community out there compared to the German communities then. Soon after the election, I asked you to paint some protest signs. How did, it, how did you feel when I gave you this homework assignment and then you, know, you made three or four sort of uh, protest signs on bed sheets and old pillowcases? Yes. How did you feel while doing that? I feel that it was doing my duty as everybody out there was painting signs, so was I. Is there anything that I have taught you or influenced? Have, have I had any influence on you as an artist? In a roundabout way, observing you and your friends, I'm aware of the gap in culture. In uh, you're my entrance to the 21st century and uh, to the world of today.